joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV, where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is vegan variations. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Beth and Katie to tell us about their recipes. So Katie, tell us uh, what vegan dish you made. All right, I will. I'm excited to share this one. It is for Middle Eastern salad tacos. And this is by Sylvia Fontaine from feastingathome.com. Um, I eat a ton of tacos, like pretty common in my household, but never a vegan variation. So always has meat, at the very least cheese. So I was excited to try this and um, have a new variation of tacos. So uh, the first thing that you do is you make some Middle Eastern spiced chickpeas. You just take a drained and rinsed can of chickpeas in um, a skillet. You add some spices and salt. The spices that they use is sumac or zatar, cumin, and yeah, and then you uh, you just heat that, like warm it a little bit. And then in the very last minute, you add some sesame seeds to that. So that's your chickpea mixture. And then you make a lemony salad. So it uses a giant handful of arugula or other greens, which I did end up using just a mixed green. Diced tomato, diced cucumber, some olive oil, lemon juice, some ground coriander, and then a little bit more salt. Uh, and then you just lightly toast up some corn tortillas until those are warm and pliable and you spread some hummus on the tortillas and then you put your warm chickpeas and a heaping mound of salad over top of that and then there's a whole list of optional garnishes that you can use pickled onions tahini sauce tar dill mint parsley cilantro scallions i think i used uh i definitely used pickled onions because they were awesome on this but I think I also used cilantro and parsley for a little bit of herbs on top um this was so tasty I just sort of slapped it together one day for lunch I just made two of them really quickly I've got a picture of that here but then I like went off and I did something and I came back later and I made another one because they were so good and I was still kind of hungry so uh the next day I spent a little bit more time on it put them out nicely on a platter with three tacos and they look so beautiful and they were so tasty and healthy. I would definitely uh, make these again. They're great for lunch, but I'd also make them for other people too, because they're just really a really nice meal and I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, that sounds awesome. When you said Middle Eastern tacos, I wasn't sure like what, where it was going to go, but the spiced chickpeas sound just like so delicious. The salad sounds fresh and amazing. And I love the kind of like sauce that you get. I, I was like, I feel like it needs something. And then you said the hummus. So that, yeah, that sounds really, really tasty. And I can't wait to make it. Yay. Yeah. I like, yeah, sounds really good. Even just as a salad without the tortilla. Mm -hmm. um, sounds you could totally do it just as a bowl. And that would be delightful as well I'm sure Definitely. I wonder too if um a topping like black olive like like Kalamata olives yeah. would be a nice topping for some brininess you know yes I bet that would be amazing on this that sounds really good for sure yeah, for sure yeah cool okay Beth tell us about your vegan variation okie dokie I is as it happened in the cook's illustrated um magazine that kurt got uh they had chickpeas do it all and i know in the future we're going to be doing a chickpea sesh but uh they had a few recipes so i made this creamy chickpea and sweet potato stew and you know what i'm just going to show it because i don't remember if i took a picture this one no that that one um 
So it's with um, a can, two cans of chickpeas. You use a can of coconut milk, um, some peanut butter, a third of a cup of peanut butter. So that's what gives it that peanut flavor. Um, the, a large sweet potato cut into half inch pieces, some tomato paste, pepper flakes, coriander, um, and then uh, a little lime zest. And it does get super creamy. And you top it with dry roasted um, peanuts and some cilantro. So it's, it's, you know, you just cook it up with, I don't need to go in there. You just simmer, you cook it. And so and it was, it was good. For me though, there was some, to, I had a little problem with the sweet potato. There was something, I didn't like the texture of it. Kurt was fine with it. I don't know, I probably, I would have preferred a better sweet potato. But other than that, I would make it again and you can't really screw it up. That does sound good. I actually almost made a like peanut sweet potato soup for this because I had a soup cookbook out. I'm glad I didn't, that would have been very similar. But um, can you take, does the peanut butter come through? Could you taste it? Yeah, just okay. to, um, yeah. Okay. For, Cause I, you know, I like, I like that. Peanut I like butter. that too. So I was just, it's, I In was fact, wondering if it was enough. Knowing me, I probably didn't measure. I probably just put a, you know, it's called for a third of a cup, but who knows how much I actually put in. Um, and probably oh, two teaspoons of grated lime plus two tablespoons of juice. I'm pretty sure I put more juice in than that. Um, just knowing me. Uh, but yeah, and then three tablespoons of tomato paste. I had run out of my tube of paste, so I just had to use um, some, you know, a can. Peanut butter? Do you use a natural peanut butter, or can you use no. whatever? They, I don't know if it said not to, but I well, most recipes that I've seen tell you not to use. It says creamy peanut butter. Okay. The natural makes it, you know, with the separation. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, I always have Jif. Well, it's probably good to have that little bit of sugar too that is yeah. in the. Yeah, the, yeah. You know, just to. I don't think about the sugar in my peanut butter, but yes, I, I'm sure there is. I'm sure <laughs> adding it. But um yeah. But when I eat spoonfuls of it. Anyway, that's uh that's what I did. Creamy chickpea and sweet potato stew. And chickpeas are really like they're culinary meals is what they are, yeah. according to the science of it. We can talk about that when we do our next session. <laughs> Elizabeth, what'd you make for veganism? Sure. So I made um, vegan lo mein. Um, my recipe comes from a website called Feasting at Home. Um, I don't think I've used it before, but um, the woman's name is Sylvia Fountain. And um, this was kind of cool because um, lots of veggies and they really told you how to modify the lo mein sauce to make it vegan, but still have really good flavor. Because apparently regular lo mein lo would often have meat in it. And then there's like fish sauce, oyster sauce, whatever. So anyway, it was really cool and it was really easy. Um, so basically you get um, lo mein noodles, which they said that those sometimes aren't vegan. So to like check. So I did make sure that the ones I got were um, just super easy ingredients. And anyway, this was, I thought of Beth because um, this was really a very like mise en place recipe. Um, so basically the only real work is chopping up the veggies. And then once you've like done all that, then you're pretty much good to go. And then you can make the sauce while they're kind of cooking. So um, the way the recipe calls for it is um, you are, ha you have half a, you have a cup of onion, two cups sliced mushroom, four chopped garlic cloves, um, some minced ginger, half a red bell pepper, cup of matchstick carrots, cup of shredded cabbage, cup of snow peas. Um, I like tripled this recipe because that only said that it was like two people. And usually I've found that I usually eat like two serving. So anyway, I just, I was like, I'm not cutting a bell pepper in half. I, I just use the whole thing. I use the whole onion, whatever. I use like half a cabbage. So you're basically quickly stir frying all that just in some neutral oil while your noodles are cooking. And um, that was all fine. And then you whip together your um, vegan lo mein sauce, which was soy sauce, um, rice vinegar, sesame oil, maple syrup or honey, 
um, some pepper and then it called for some kind of like chili paste. So I had gochujang, so I just mixed that in. And um, I always find with recipes that they don't call for enough sauce. Like it was like a tablespoon and I was like, no. So I was fully just like dumping stuff into a bowl because I knew I wanted my it to be saucy. So then once your veggies are good to go, which is like, they're still pretty crisp, but just kind of like warmed through and the onion has cooked down a bit. You add the noodles in and you add the sauce in all to your big skillet or wok. And you just kind of steadily toss it for like two minutes just to let the noodles kind of absorb that sauce. And then you top it with fresh scallions and that was it. I have a photo here. It was really delicious. I definitely plan to do this again. And I loved how easy it was to incorporate all the veggies. And they even mentioned like, um, I like this. They were like, um, oh, if like you could do a handful of baby spinach, you could do bok choy in the spring. Asparagus is nice. In the winter, you could do some like roasted veggies. So I thought that was cool. Oh, last thing I forgot, you'll see this. I did some tofu as well. To, um, they said like, if you weren't doing the vegan thing, you could do chicken or whatever. I did tofu because I wanted to try that out and keep it vegan. And um, I just like crisped that separately in a skillet. Really, I just cut it into cubes and put it in some oil and just let it brown. And that was a really nice little addition. Um, so yeah, great. And I thought this was good for me because I sometimes struggle cooking for vegan friends because I just, I'm not vegan. So I just don't think about it, but I was like, this would be a good thing to have in my back pocket for like a dinner party where someone's vegan, because it was just good and easy. And I, I don't think like, it's not like, I don't know, there wasn't anything that I think non-vegans would be like, is this cashew cheese or, you know, like it was just like, it's just lo mein. So, um, it was really good. And, um, yeah, I, I recommend it. This is like the exact kind of recipe that I prefer to be super veggie forward or and or with tofu over like almost anything else. So I really I thought that sounded amazing. Like so, so good. I'm glad you put the extra veggies and sauce and stuff in there, too. The other thing that is funny is that we do have the same recipe author today so I don't know if you noticed that but oh my god I didn't I wasn't paying attention but different uh, website no same website same oh did you yeah. you said feasting at home oh my gosh that's funny okay <laughs> yeah I just thought that was that was really funny apparently she's got some real good vegan recipes, does, so yeah. look her up <laughs> yeah, yeah that's hilarious really cool all the websites in this town yeah. Well, I hadn't used it before. Real, I mean, it seemed, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, thanks everyone. And thanks to our viewers for watching recipe, watching recipe share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on AADL.org to find the recipes we talked about. Feel free to share your own in the comments. Join us next time on recipe share when we'll, we will be talking about savory bakes. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share. Recipe share. Share a little recipe with recipe share.